Guys, 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 what is happening? Why are we getting back to this? So a few months ago, a huge scandal erupted in the K-pop industry surrounding Hype labels and their subsidiary agency, Adore, particularly involving the CEO of Adore, Min Hee Jin, who is also the creator of the group New Jeans. So back then, the situation escalated when Hype suspected that Min Hee Jin and Adore wanted to break away from Hype's management and take the group with them. The scandal was actively discussed at the end of April, but as time passed, K-pop fans seemed to forget about it. And quite recently, just a few days ago, on July 23rd, Dispatch, a Korean news agency, presented a major investigation regarding Min Hee Jin and Hype, uncovering some new interesting information. Before we begin, I want to say that I'm not taking sides in this conflict. I really like New Jeans, they have amazing songs and really talented, cool members. Min Hee Jin is absolutely a professional producer as she has demonstrated multiple times with her successful projects and High Labels is also one of the largest K-pop companies currently managing incredible K-pop groups like BTS, The Seraphim and others. I just want to take a look at the situation from the outside. To begin with, Dispatch, in order to prove that they've done some insightful research on the subject, provided pre-debut photos of the group New Jeans. These photos revealed that initially 10 girls could have been in the group. Later, this number was reduced to 7 and eventually, as we know, 5 members were selected. Dispatch also presented pre-debut dance practices for the songs Attention and Trainee, where we see that there are more than 5 participants. Next, Dispatch describes the entire situation. So according to Dispatch, the debut of New Jeans began preparations actually back in 2018, initially managed by Source Music. In 2019, Min Hee Jin joined Hype and began working on the New Jeans project as a creative director. Hype saw that she had been a very successful producer at SM Entertainment and when she left SM, she started working on Hype's first ever girl group. In the beginning, Source Music and Hype labels collaborated well, however, at some point, according to Dispatch, Min Hee Jin began undermining Source Music and Hype labels. She claimed to have promotional ideas for new jeans but never actually shared them clearly. They were always just in her head and not documented anywhere. Source Music tolerated the situation for a long time, but eventually the CEO of Source Music just came and directly asked Min Hee Jin when they could expect a promotional plan for new jeans. Min Hee Jin replied that she had a plan in mind and would provide it in a couple of weeks when her staff returned from vacation. The problem was that weeks passed and no promotional plan ever materialized. After the conversation with the CEO of Source Music, according to Dispatch, Min Hee Jin decided to reach out to Shamans. Yeah, that's right, Shamans. It's worth noting that all these events occurred in early 2021 and initially New Jeans were supposed to debut in 2021. However, plans changed and interestingly, from March to April 2021, according to Dispatch, Min Hee Jin spent $28,000 on consulting shamans. She discussed some quite important issues. For example, she shared her plans that she didn't want to just be creative director for the group New Jeans. She wanted it to be entirely her group. In her correspondence with the shamans, she outlined her plan to secure 30% of investments from Hive, another 30% from Cacao, and then invest her own savings to create her own new independent group. However, the shamans advised her against this idea. Meanwhile, Source Music was still waiting for Min Hee Jin to provide some plans for new jeans, but she was busy communicating with the shamans. The situation frustrated Source Music, and they began considering debuting another K-pop group. At that moment, two well-known girls, Sakura and Chewan, arrived at Hype Labels. Their contract with their previous group, Eyes One, had ended in spring 2021 and Hype Labels offered them a chance to join a new girl group. It turned out that Hype was effectively forced to start working on another project because Min Hee Jin hadn't provided a clear concept for new jeans. When Min Hee Jin learned that her project was no longer a priority for Hype and that they were more interested in La Seraphim now, she was understandably shocked by this decision. She then resumed her correspondence with the shamans expressing her dissatisfaction and reiterating her desire to be more than just a creative director. Fortunately for her, she achieved her goal when Hype Labels opened opened a subsidiary agency Adore, where Min Hee Jin began working on her own girl group. 
Initially, New Jeans was supposed to consist of 10 girls, but the final lineup ended up being 5 members. So what happened to the others? So Min Hee Jin once again reached out to Shamans and began discussing who should be included in the debut lineup of New Jeans. She was doing that via Kakao Talk. She sent them photos of potential members and Shamans provided their opinions on the candidates. This actually means that the members of New Jeans were not necessarily the most talented, but rather those chosen by the Shamans. This behavior is quite strange for a creative director, because if she was uncertain about her decisions, and if she wanted advice, she should have consulted the industry experts, not shamans. But again, guys, again, all of this is just part of a larger investigation by Dispatch. After a huge article came out, just so you know, Min Hee Jin representing Adore claimed that everything was a blatant lie and announced plans to sue Dispatch. But okay, if Dispatch is lying, then Min Hee Jin should provide us with evidence that this is actually fake. And if she has proof, it could undermine all of Dispatch's investigations. Not just those related to Min Hee Jin and Hype, but everything, literally everything they do. At the very least, Adore and Min Hee Jin needed to respond to this situation. And Adore issued a small official statement claiming that Hype Labels wants to ruin the career and reputation of New Jeans. The problem is that a few months ago, New Jeans released a song called Bubblegum, and an English artist accused the group of plagiarizing his track and creating a bubblegum song. According to Adore, the English artist initially reached out to Hype Labels directly to resolve the issue. However, as Min Hee Jin and the Adore team state, instead of quietly addressing the problem internally, Hype Labels decided to turn it into a huge media scandal, thus putting the group in a difficult position. The situation is quite strange considering that Hype Labels is the parent company of Adore and effectively owns New Jeans, so what would be the point for Hype to undermine a successful project that generates a lot of revenue for them? Because by putting Adore at risk, they essentially jeopardize their own reputation, which could potentially affect all their other projects. Following this major dispatch investigation and Adore's statement, Adore officially announced that New Jeans would be taking a break. The official reason given is that they recently had two comebacks and large performances in Japan and now the girls need time to rest and recover. But actually it's a slightly odd reason to take a break right after a comeback without clear reasons, especially since in the K-pop industry artists are typically active all the time. Just think of groups like Stray Kids for example, who are constantly doing collaborations, fan meetings, galas, fashion events and performances at various festivals around the world. Why would New Jeans go on a break immediately after releasing songs remains unclear. The situation calmed down on July 23rd, but only briefly. On the same day, it became known that Adore and Min Hee Jin decided to sue Hype Labels, Source Music and Dispatch. Moments later, it was revealed that Source Music was also suing Min Hee Jin. So in short, everyone was suing everyone. Guys, let's see how these legal battles will unfold because clearly this scandal continues to involve more and more people. And now, even the parents of the New Jeans members have stepped into the situation. They are deeply concerned with their children's futures and careers, which is totally understandable. However, it's a bit perplexing why family members are starting to influence the show business. So on July 24th, the parents of New Jeans gave an exclusive interview to Sports World. Minji's mother from New Jeans mentioned that Minji moved to Seoul when she was just 13 years old and began living in a dormitory as a trainee. Firstly, I want to mention that if Minji was able to move to Seoul as a minor, it means that her parents consented to it. They understood what was happening and agreed, right? She wouldn't have been able to just come to Seoul by herself or sign a contract with Hype. That's not how it happens. It's even mentioned on entertainment company's website that you have to have a legal representative or guardian if you are an underage trainee. Next, her mother wanted to enter the dormitory, but parents were prohibited from doing so. This was also likely outlined in the contract, and if her mother wasn't happy with the situation, she could have chosen not to sign the contract. Eventually, Minji's mother did get in the dormitory, but only a year after. And when she arrived, she was shocked to find cockroaches running around and mold in the corners of the rooms. And if participants lived in such conditions, it raises a question. 
If she had provided evidence of what she saw and approached Hybe with a complaint and they responded dismissively, that would be one situation. However, she hasn't provided such evidence and merely states that it was like that when it happened and how long it lasted is also unclear. Additionally, trainees were not deprived of phones with cameras, so if the living conditions were that poor, they could have sent the information to their parents to address the issue. Moving on, Minji's mother mentions that Minji was nervous because source music did not give her any guarantees of debuting at the time. However, I have to say that this is a standard practice for K-pop trainees. In fact, no trainee in the K-pop industry has guarantees of debuting. Next, Minji's mother talks about how Source Music was a very poor company because they made her train until 2am every day, including weekends, without any days off. And again, regarding the guarantees of debuting, this is a common practice for all trainees. And Minji, with a 99.9% .9 likelihood, was not the only one training until 2am. She also recalls how she still remembers Minji's frightened voice when she would walk home alone at night as a 14-year-old. It's important to understand that Source Music is responsible for its trainees. If Minji's parents saw that they were not providing adequate safety for their daughter, they should have addressed this with Source and tried to influence the situation. It's strange that this issue has only come up now. Furthermore, according to Minji's mother, Minji loved school and wanted to attend high school. However, instead of traditional school, she was offered a spot at Hanlim Art School so that it wouldn't interfere with her training. Many trainees go through this, and Source Music did not force Minji to attend the art school instead of a traditional one. This choice ultimately remained with her and her parents, and if they agreed to this at the time, why are they now raising complaints? It's actually a slightly peculiar situation, because it seems like the mother wants to shift the responsibility for her child's life onto some external parties, even though the final decision rested with her and Minji. As I mentioned earlier, Hype Labels and Source Music decided to focus more on the group La Seraphine because it had two well-known members, Sakura and Chiawan, and also because Min Hee Jin didn't give any clear guidance or plan on how to develop new genes. Minji's mother expressed concern that her daughter had hoped to debut in the first group of Hype, but they prioritized another project. But I have to say this is a normal situation in the industry and plans can change. If Minji's contract specified that she would debut in the first group, then the complaints are absolutely justified. But if it was only discussed verbally, then there can be no complaints as no debut guarantees were given. Later, in an exclusive interview, Minji's mother also said that she and the other parents of New Jeans members are very happy that they joined Adore and have no thoughts of leaving the company. They are thrilled that their group, New Jeans, is being managed by Min Hee Jin. And I have to say it's great that over the two years of their career, they formed such a good community, almost like a family, and that they work together well with Min Hee Jin. However, further along in the same interview, Minji's mother expresses her distrust in hype labels, stating, The problem is that hype labels is after us. I remember all the reports that flooded in for three days starting April 22nd. The reports even tried to portray new genes and their parents as strange. Other mothers have also expressed their dissatisfaction. For instance, Danielle's mother was outraged that Dispatch published a pre-debut video of her daughter. However, I have to mention that only the right holders, namely Hive Label in this case, can file complaints because at the time when idols are just trainees, all pre-debut recordings belong to the company. Therefore, if Hype has no issues with this, then there are none. Mothers of Hain and Herring recall that in April, when the major scandal between Hype Labels and Min Hee erupted, some South Korean media outlets began suggesting that New Jeans was repeating the fate of 50-50, which they believe damaged the group's reputation. They think that these articles were instigated by Hype Labels. And many have noticed the similarities between these situations and the negative trend in the scandal's development. Also, mothers of Hain and Herring then remember their daughters being extremely nervous during their pre-debut period as Source Music and Hype would keep it a secret for a long, long time whether the girls passed the final audition to be included in the group or not. But I have to say this is absolutely not unique to them. All trainees undergoing final auditions experienced such anxiety and Hain and Herring were not the only girls who didn't get to know final results for a long time. It's just a part of K-pop industry. Let's for example remember the recent debut of Baby Monster. First, they confirmed the lineup of seven members. Then, they launched a reality show in which they mentioned that the number of participants would be reduced to five. And then, Yang Ho Sok personally announced five members and only a few minutes later stated that all seven would debut. This is absolutely crazy and the members of Baby Monster were also very nervous about the situation. So most K-pop trainees have to go through this. 
Well, let's remember that there were also some other trainees around the current members of New Jeans who did not even get to debut. So technically their situation is even worse because they were nervous and then they missed out, they got left behind and everyone just forgot about them. It seems like no one is even bringing them up at this point. And for some reason, later in the interview, the mothers of Hain and Heron began to threaten the company Hype Labels. Yes, the entire corporation. They say they remember the times when Source Music treated the members of New Jeans disrespectfully and dismissively. And not only do they remember this, but the members themselves do too. And according to the mothers, they even have some evidence of this disrespect. And then they pose an interesting question. Do hype labels want us to show all of this? At this point, the question is really directed at the mothers themselves. If they have evidence that Hype Labels treats the members poorly, now is the time to present the evidence to the public so they can learn about it, verify it, and believe them completely. But for some reason, there is no evidence so far. Like, I understand that the parents of New Jeans are concerned about their children's future. That's amazing, that's great. It's wonderful that they support their family. However, they also need to understand that their actions could potentially ruin their children's careers. Messages also have emerged that Minhijin left the police station after a whole 8-hour interrogation and now seems to be the perfect time to recall that Minhijin had a huge complaint against hype labels just a few days ago. She decided to recall 2021 and the group BTS. It's actually quite interesting that whenever there are major scandals in the K-pop industry, many try to tie the situation to BTS. And this is a rather simple move to divert public attention from the scandal to more popular artists. So what's the essence? Min Hye Jin recalled that in 2021 BTS music video, two trainees that would later debut in New Jeans appeared. Min Hye Jin was uninformed that they would appear in this video and now she reflects on the situation considering it a significant act of disrespect towards her. It's a slightly funny situation because in 2021 she literally said nothing. On the contrary, it could actually be seen as a plus for New Jeans to appear in such a popular group's video. But now, with this major scandal involving hype labels, she decided to bring it up. This drama will last for some time, and it seems like no one will come out of this scandal unscathed. It has become too big, and now the only question is how significant the reputational and financial losses will be. But I'm here to thank you for watching this video till the end. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope to see you in my future videos.